everyone welcome to my channel this is my first ever youtube video my name is natalie i'm here today to talk to you about why my family and i decided to permanently leave canada and move to macedonia we made the decision to move uh, at the end of march 2023 we started on the whole process in the beginning of april 2023 and by the end of august we were out of canada we finished with selling our house with packing up our belongings to go on a shipping container they're not here yet but we did all of that in just the span of a couple of months it was insane i just wanted to mention though that it was god who opened up our eyes to the problems of canada and it was god who at the same time my mom my brother and i we all were on the same page about macedonia it was end of march where my mom uh, you know, wanted to have a talk with my brother and I because she realized that God is taking us back home. And she prayed to God to say, Lord, um, you know, if you're putting this on my heart, please put it on my children's hearts too. I can't imagine us being separated and I don't think you'd want us to be separated because we're so close, all of us, right? And so when it came time for her to talk to all of us, we shocked her because we were like, oh, mom, we've actually been talking about Macedonia for some time and we feel the exact same way about moving to Macedonia. And so guys, this hit all three of us at the same time without all three of us coming to some, we didn't get together to come to some decision, like we really had to think about it. No, we were already on the same page at the same time. And just a little bit of background about me. So uh, my, my family and I, we are Macedonian and growing up, I would visit Macedonia in the summertime almost every summer. Mind you, my parents, they came to Canada in the 90s and they never in their wildest dreams imagined that we would all one day move back. Their plan was to live in Canada permanently. Uh, the first reason that I can think of, which I'm sure many other Canadians would agree, is the really high cost of living. I grew up in Toronto, uh, I'm born and raised in Canada, and the cost of living has gotten so bad that even folks who have a full-time job, who arguably get paid really well, are still struggling to make ends meet. I don't understand how I make $34 an hour, and I can't function. I can't function. I can't pay my bills. I apparently make too much money to receive any financial benefits or help of any kind. I don't get GST. I don't get like the grocery benefit for single parents, even though I'm a single parent, but I apparently make too much money. I can't reach out to certain resources or any resources because I make too much money. Food has become so unaffordable in this city that even people employed with full-time jobs can no longer buy groceries. That's according to a new report by Feed Scarborough Food Bank, which has seen a startling 112% increase in visits since last year. 112%. The from food banks has skyrocketed right across the city. And a new report released by Feed Scarborough is digging into why, uncovering troubling stats. Almost a third of their clients are employed. Think about it. You're working 40 hours a week, but you still cannot afford food, which is a basic human right. More than half of those employed Incredible. reported low income Canada, as a reason guys. for accessing a food bank. What does that say to you? That says that we have precarious employment, number one. That says that our housing and other expenses are so high that they are often food is somewhere where they compromise. Can avoid it, do not come to Ontario. The cost of living here is ridiculously high and we are currently going through a cost of living crisis. Not just in Ontario, in Canada, in the world right now, but it's really, really bad in Ontario, specifically major cities like Toronto. You can literally type in on TikTok, Canada crisis 2023 and you will see so many videos of Canadians talking about their struggle and how badly they want to move or get out and they just can't. Another problem in Canada which goes hand in hand with the high cost of living is housing. Housing has become unaffordable. Whether you are renting, the rent continues to go up every single year, the average one-bedroom apartment in Toronto costs around $2,600, 
people don't have that kind of money hardly on a dual income let alone single income and not to mention fewer people are able to actually buy a house especially my generation like you typically have to rent either with multiple roommates or with your partner or a lot of folks are just at home with their family right i only know i think one person who ended up buying a house right it's very uncommon for our generation now because the interest rates continue to go up they went up in june of this year they went up in july so that has become a problem it's getting harder and harder to be able to get a mortgage but then good luck paying off that mortgage how the hell is anyone existing in canada like i just i feel trapped and like like i just got a good job i start in september but even with that job it pays less than 40 grand a year and it's a job that requires like education and even on that job like i still can't do shit i can't buy anything i can't afford the rent these days like i'm i'm just i'm i'm just feeling so much despair another problem too with canada is our education system and the job market so growing up we were always told you've got to do post-secondary education which would be university or college you have to do one of those to get a job you're definitely going to get a job right and be successful now i did complete university and i was fortunate enough that i, I got a job shortly after finishing school but i was one of the few people who did that and most of my friends had to wait a year, more than a year. I know people who went to post-secondary and still struggle to get a good job in their field. And so many people have to often get a job that's completely unrelated to their field, or they get a job that is severely underpaid for the sake of getting experience, right? In the hopes that they're gonna climb up the ladder and you know, get a, a better job one day and either that doesn't happen or again they're overworked in order to get to that point so that being said you can go to college go to university um you know really rack up some debt you know in, in doing that i mean i had about sixty thousand something dollars worth of debt you know four years of undergrad two uh two years of doing my master's and um it's really hard to pay that off but all that to say you can go to post-secondary and still really struggle to get a job in your field especially it's incredibly competitive regardless of what field you go into typically and to add to the job market situation jobs are changing in canada back in the day you used to get a full-time job with benefits maybe even a pension that was essentially the goal but jobs have changed now. A lot of it is contract work. So what does that mean? That means that you have no benefits at all, no pension, right? Typically a contract will say how long you're gonna have the job for, right? So there will be an end date. And when I say benefits, I mean you don't have any type of healthcare insurance, right? No uh, dental care, uh, optometrist, none of that. You're paying for medications out of pocket, right? So that is very, very difficult. But again, jobs that have benefits, that have a pension, they're harder to come by. We also have um, an immigration problem at the moment. Now, before I get any hate, uh, Canada is known for being very multicultural, very diverse, right? However, now we are letting in so many immigrants that we don't have enough housing to support these people. And we have a homeless problem at the moment. We always did, but especially in major cities, but it continues to get worse and worse. This is Canada. These are homeless tents and it keeps getting, it wraps all the way over there and keeps getting larger. Like what is the government doing about this? I don't know where my tax dollars are going to, but it needs to go into getting these people housing. Like, this is not, like, you guys, it goes all the way over there. Like, it wraps around. This is not okay. So, unfortunately, we have refugees coming to Canada and being told that they're going to live a better life. And here they are out on the streets, 
there was even a Ukrainian family. I'm gonna see if I can find it somewhere. There might be information, but there was even a Ukrainian family who fled from the Ukraine. They came to Canada and they went right back. They weren't happy. The violence has also gotten incredibly bad. Now I'm referring to Toronto specifically, again, really large city. We're talking, uh, I think it was 5 million people, right? If we consider the GTA, but the violence has gotten really, really bad. And, you know, having grown up in a large city, I, and I'm a woman as well, so I was always told to be hypervigilant, right? If I'm going anywhere alone, uh, especially at night, that, that's a no-no, right? But now crimes are happening in broad daylight to the point where I, along with many other Canadians, don't feel safe taking public transit during the day. And so many people rely on public transit. We're talking subways, we're talking TTC, the buses, right? And yet people don't feel safe because more and more crimes keep happening. So the violence has gotten really bad, unfortunately. Another problem too, the mental health continues to decline not just in Canada, but in North America, arguably the mental health has gotten really bad and that was um, even more so after COVID. So we are seeing more and more cases of mental illnesses, right? Depression, anxiety, and so forth. High, high levels of stress. People are just so heavily focused on work and people really identify with their jobs. And I was one of those people who, uh, yes, I took great pride in my job, but I so strongly associated my identity with my work. And so many other people in Canada do that too. And while that can be a beautiful thing to be proud of what you do for your job, we're so much more than just what we do for work, right? And just to give you an example of what I mean by that. So let's say I was at a social event, I'm meeting people for the first time that I don't know in Canada. One of the first things that they might ask me is, Oh, what do you do for work? Where did you go to school? What did you study? Right? And I can totally understand why that might be interesting as a conversation starter. But now, if I were to compare it to Macedonians, they don't heavily identify with their job. They work to make a living, right? They don't live to work the way Canadians do. So while I might ask a Macedonian, what do you do for work? Or they might ask me, that's not one of the first things that they think to talk about. The other major difference between Canada and Macedonia is the culture. And I could probably spend a long time talking about the culture, but I'm going to give you some examples. So Canada is known for having very nice people or very nice, right? That we were always known in Canada as being very nice people. But there is a difference between being nice and being caring. Right? So let me give you some examples. So in Canada, yes, people are polite, people are respectful, generally speaking. Uh, but here in Macedonia, um, people genuinely want to help. And this could be, you know, you could be a complete stranger to somebody and they still want to help you. So my parents are from small towns. Right. And just to give you an example, my mom and I, we had to go to the store to unlock my mom's phone because she wanted to buy a SIM card here to get a Macedonian phone number. Her phone was locked. I don't know why none of ours were, but we went into the store and the worker told us that he can't do it for us, unfortunately, that we have to find somebody who specializes in it. It's all good now. Uh, her phone's fine now. But anyway, as we were talking to the worker, there was another man in the store and he overheard our conversation. It's a fairly small store. And he just told us, hey, I know a guy in this city. His name is such and such. Here's his phone number. He can do this for you. You know, and he didn't know us. We didn't know him. So that's just one example, right, of people being really caring. Another example, I haven't been in Macedonia in eight years. And I feel really ashamed to even say that. It's been such a long time for me. I grew up coming to Macedonia almost every summer as a child. So I've always been really connected here. But, you know, I was going to university, uh, COVID happened, right? Life got busy. But anyway, I haven't seen my friends in eight years. And so when it came time for me to tell everyone that, hey, my family and I were coming to Macedonia, we're, we're moving here, right? And these people that I haven't seen in eight years, they all told me, 
the same thing. They said, hey, if you have any questions at all, let me know, reach out to me. I'm here to help you, whatever I can do to help, right? And I had multiple people tell me some variation of that. And I don't even know if they understand how much that means to me because in Canada, my family and I, we grew up uh, just, you know, not really being able to rely on anyone. Right? You get used to that. You get used to having to do everything by yourself. And so it's almost unusual for us to be receiving this help for no reason. But that's because people genuinely care and they want to help. I want to mention another example of the difference in culture between Canada and Macedonia. So there were people in Canada that meant a lot to my family and I that we really wanted to say goodbye to before leaving. and. They knew that we were leaving and yet these people that meant so much to us they didn't find the time to see us to say bye knowing fully well that we were leaving that who knows when we'll ever see each other again if ever and that was incredibly painful and so to be able to compare that with now these friends of mine that I haven't seen in eight years who are all offering their help to me. It's just, um, you might hear a bike in the background. It's just incredible to see the differences in that way. People that I haven't or hardly spoken to in eight years versus people in Canada who I've known for many years, my family and I, that we genuinely cared about. So. That just goes to show as well the difference in culture, I feel. In Canada, we are so incredibly isolated that I got used to being a hermit, guys. What I mean by that is just spending time at home, not really going anywhere or seeing people. I mean, A, it's really expensive to be going out places. And if you're living in Toronto, things are far. It's a really big city and really, really busy. But I got used to the isolation, like so many other people, right? We essentially get brainwashed into feeling like that's normal and yet here in Macedonia people socialize people rely so heavily on their family on their friendships socializing is a really big deal the other big difference in Canada too is um, with the work-life balance being incredibly poor uh, people are you know if they're not always working they are just go 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 always busy always doing something right and I remember trying to organize get-togethers with my friends and we're talking people who live in the same city and yet you could go weeks if not months without seeing them and the argument would always be I'm too busy right so that is a whole other issue too right people being too busy to even have meaningful relationships with other people or you know, maybe they also don't prioritize it enough too because of this whole like hustle culture that we have in North America where you are essentially praised for being overworked and burnt out. Also, now that I have finished my post-secondary education, I've been working for a couple of years now, I have to say, I also felt like every day became monotonous. Every day felt like it was the exact same thing on repeat. You get up, you go to work or work from home, whatever, you do your job, right? Then you, you finish that, you make food, you know, and, and just repeat. And then on my days off, I felt like I was essentially having to stay at home to recharge because my batteries were drained, only to just repeat that cycle when I went back to work. So that has essentially become, I, I feel, the lifestyle in Canada too, at least for us young folks. Life felt very empty. It felt very meaningless, right? Like there's no sense of purpose, which is kind of odd because we are so heavily attached to our uh, work identity, right? A lot of people tend to heavily, um, you know, pride themselves on their jobs and this whole hustle culture of like always having to work and do things. And, um, you know, there's a heavy emphasis on materialism too, right? Turning to material things as a way to bring us happiness. And yet, life in North America feels empty. And I think we can clearly see that because mental health is really bad 
in North America right now. And again, it's probably because of a combination of things. Everything that I've mentioned in this video, high cost of living, um, people not being able to buy properties, again, the isolation, not as much socializing. So it's a lot, poor work-life balance. It's a lot. And um, every country has its own problems, guys. I don't wanna, you know, sugarcoat and make it seem like this is the perfect country. It's not by any means. I'm gonna make a video of the cons of living here. But with all that being said, um, people have problems here, yes. However, they're not as stressed out. Mental health is better. And one could argue, you know, is that because their level of stress is not as high or is it because they're more resilient to stress? Probably a combination of both, I would think. Uh, on top of that, having more social supports because of the socializing that they, um, you know, heavily value, right? So it's a combination of things. So all in all, simpler life here. And um, again, people are generally happier here, even despite having problems of their own, problems that look different than for North Americans. If you made it to the end of my video, thanks so much for sticking around. If you can relate to anything at all that I mentioned about my time in Canada or, you know, Macedonia or just Europe, right? The differences between North America and Europe. Let me know in the comments what you think and if you can relate and just know that you're not alone in how you feel. Yeah, there's a wasp.